All right. Well, I want to welcome everyone to the RCL Wireless News Tele Spotlight webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Meyer. I'm an editor in chief of RCR Wireless News, and today we'll be discussing trends in the ta in the, uh, CIO, in the CIO space. Uh, joining me today uh, will be my colleague Roberta Prescott, who uh, just completed an extensive report looking at uh, current issues and challenges facing telecom CIOs. Uh, also joining us today is Courtney Monroe, who's Group Vice President for Worldwide Telecommunications at Andel's firm IDC. Thanks, you guys, for joining us today. We appreciate it. Uh, the, today, uh, the plan for today's webinar is, uh, is to begin with Roberta to provide a, a concise overview of her recent report on the uh, CIO topic, uh, including findings from talking with a number of CIOs across the telecom space. Uh, then Courtney will come on uh, to provide an overview of, of challenges and opportunities facing CIOs across the telecom space, as well as trends across carrier IT organizations. We will then reserve the final 20 minutes or so of the webinar for a Q&A session. Uh, for those of you with questions for our panel members, uh, please send those along using the uh, questions tab there on the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. Uh, if you have a question for a specific member of the panel, please make sure to include their name in the question as well. Uh, a quick bit of housekeeping too before we start. Uh, for those of you that might be having some audio difficulties hearing us, uh, we will try to speak as loudly as uh, comfortable or as possible, uh, but please make sure to check your audio settings on your computer as well. Uh, also to let you guys know that uh, for everyone who's registered for this webinar today, uh, a link to a copy of the uh, report as well as a link to a replay of this webinar uh, for, for later use. So uh, with that, I say we, uh, we kick it off um, uh, and let, uh, let Roberto, oh, actually here's a quick slide, sorry about that, about RCR Wireless News. Uh, as you can see, we've been covering the, uh, the mobile space here for more than 30 years uh, with a lengthy history of covering the wireless ecosystem. Now with that, uh, I want to bring on uh, Roberta to uh, give us an overview of her recently completed report on the topic of, of CIOs in telecom space. So uh, Roberta, it's all yours. Thank you, Dan. Hello, all of you. As Dan Meyer just said, we just posted a future report, which is an in-deep story about how CIOs, uh, what are CIOs' roles in the future of telecommunication. And I wrote this report, so I bring for you, all of you here my findings on the story that you can download and read it after this uh, so uh, what we are seeing today is the scenario of telecommunication of telecom operate, operators are facing today and uh, I've talked to many analysts and uh, what they agree is the information has become the new oil and the CIO inside telecom operators have to lead the companies towards a better understanding of their customer setting and the company itself so as CIOs, they have this uh, view of the, what's going on in every systems of telecom operators. They're not, they are able to help them to better understanding this, the, their customers. And in addition, in the wireless space, we are seeing the competitions that came not only from other telecom operators, but they also have the over-the-top players such as Netflix, for example, or YouTube. And uh, those demands that come from these over-the-top players increase uh, the difficulties and the challenges for side to understand what's going on and to provide better, better service to their customers. And from CIO's perspectives, uh, what I see is that they are in the positions to help communication service providers to become more competitive in, and again to understand the customers and this can uh, help telecom operators to increase revenues and to reduce reduce co uh, operation cost. Uh, in addition to that, all telecom operators, they are going through this digital transformation and they are becoming more and more digital. We see the 3G and the 4G and all of that uh, represent a change to inside the operators and how they are going and how this, they are going through this digital journey. Multi-channel sales and services, another challenges that 
telecom operators are facing. And to end all this, uh, telecom operators at, as, as well as other uh, companies from other sectors, they are facing the challenges of big data, which is a huge amount of information that they have to analyze and they have to understand uh, the unstructured and unstructured data. Uh, for this, there is what we are calling telecom analytics tools, which are the softwares and solutions that help telecom operators to understand all this data and to improve this, this touch with their customers. In addition, we, we've been discussing for about five to ten years cloud computing and now we are seeing much, much more about social media and mobile technology and all of this have created tough challenges for telecom operators and uh, as well as uh, at the same time they are challenges they are also they also represent a great opportunities so um, in this slide you can see what I pick up as carrier priorities uh, the, from talks I have to CIOs, from telecom operators, and as well as analysts. And they point out business growth, reducing costs to gain, to gain operation efficiency, attracting and retaining customers in this more competitive environment. They have to help carriers to reduce time to market. It means when one carrier launch a product, the, the other one have to has to be able to launch a, a similar or a more attractive offering in a very reduced time. They also um, have to provide better and more personalized offerings to their customers. And again, it is related to understanding the customers, to providing them what they really want. Um, from systems perspective, uh, carriers are facing decentralizing billing systems and we have to recall that many telecom operators from around the globe, they are uh, just, they, they bought smaller carriers so they have different billing systems, not just billing but CRM systems, ERP systems and OSS, BSS systems and they have to centralize and they have to pick up which is the better one and to develop the IT strategy based on this. And also they are seeing the advantage of machine to machine, mobile advertising and payment and the Internet of Things. Carriers are aware of this and they are trying to understand how they can take advantage of this new technologies or new concept and how they can gain some money and uh, to, to improve their, increase their revenue from this. So when talking to CIOs, we've seen a lot of uh, technologies and a lot of solutions they are aware of and business intelligence, real-time analytics solutions are two of them and they are focused on this to monetize the information they already have transform this in some data then can gain some revenue from from this uh, the all information also they are uh, developing and improving customers experience so they have to deploy several relationship solutions to such as customer experience management, management customer experience analytics to better understand customers uh, as I said before, cloud computer is there and carriers have all the data centers and everything so uh, they are looking at how they can take advantage of this to provide enterprise software as a service, infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. This, this all can be uh, additional service that carriers can provide to enterprise market and CIOs can help carriers on that journey because on the other side they are consuming uh, cloud computing solutions. Another trend that I've been hearing a lot is software defined at working and I believe this SDN new concept can change the way the carriers are looking at their networking. 
uh, from customer sides, uh, carriers are trying to understand how their clients are consuming data, are consuming their telecom service, and carriers want to put more capabilities on customers' phones and tablets. And so it, this all can help carriers to interact with customers. And of course, uh, OSS and BSS and all telecom specific systems. So when looking at the future of telco CEOs, um, what I, can, I, I point out four major trends, and um, they need to, to sit at a strateg strategic level to assess and make critical business decision. From many years, CIOs have, have had a role of being supporting the business and just uh, taking uh, what demands and to developing IT strategies. And since carriers become more digital, CIOs have the chance to become, to take this strategic level. Um, they have, uh, in addition to that, the CIOs have to keep business running while implementing new technologies and supporting the launch of new services and offerings. It means that they just cannot leave what they are doing to come up with more innovation solutions. So they have to, to do both. Um, another thing here is that they have, they have to, they are, they are creating helping carriers to create a strategy to capture, store, analyze, and transform raw data into valuable information that can positively impact the business. Uh, earlier this year, RCR released a future report and did a webinar and RCR uh, TV shows regarding only telecom analytics and how carriers are embracing these new analytics solutions to help them improve the, uh, the capability to manage those data. So this is a trend that didn't start right now, but it's very important to telco CIO's futures. And at least, at, at my last point here is the IT is the heart of carrier transformation. When talking to many vendors or anal uh, and but many players uh, on the IT industry, I've always heard that uh, IT from telecoms and IT from financial services such as banks, they are the most important thing of the companies because they are on the heart of these uh, companies. So uh, said, having said that, I would like to uh, call Courtney Moreau from IDC, which uh, uh, who whom I interview for this future report and join us today to give us his insights. Um, thanks, thanks Roberta. That was a very comprehensive overview of um, you know many of the key trends that we're seeing um, in the telecom sector today. Uh, next slide, Roberta. So. I think um, the most important um, issue here for me is, is that as, as telcos transform into IP, into mobile and cloud um, services and infrastructures, I think the role of the CIO is, is changing. I think traditionally, um, and, and, and it's probably true in the enterprise segment as well, the CIOs have, have been more internal internally focused, as Roberta said, to build, to keep the business running, keep the lights on. Um, I think increasingly what we're seeing is that this role is, 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 is merging more with the, the externally faced role of the CTO. Um, and, and we're also seeing a, a significant uh, role by the CMO um, as, as, as well. So I think that in some cases, we're seeing um, these these roles uh, sort of meld into into one, and I think the, the the important thing is that it's because IT is becoming a strategic investment. Um, it's it's no longer just about changing the flow of information within the company. 
it's more about meeting the business objectives of the company. And a lot of that is, is, is because of how the, the communications um, environment has changed. As you can see from this chart where IDC, that IDC calls the evolution of its third platform, um, the industry has changed from, you know, what we call the second platform, which is, which is all about dominated by PCs and, and the client-server architecture, where you have, um, you, you may have thousands of applications, and, and as a company, you have, um, uh, uh, you know, certainly thousands of businesses, maybe hundreds of thousands of businesses as your customers, and, and, and consumers that, that may number in the millions. Um, with the tourist platform, with, with the, the spread of, of cloud and mobility, you have to worry about millions of applications running across your network. You have to worry about uh, millions and billions of consumers shaping um, your network uh, and the traffic flows in your network and influencing um, services on your network. So we've seen this radical change from, from you know, sort of this really small uh, uh, degree of audience, this huge uh, mammoth audience, and, and the network has to respond. And I think the key here is that, is that as, as, as telcos transform into being ICT providers, uh, as we begin to speak more and more of the, the shutdown of the legacy network for those companies that still have a legacy platform, um, CIOs are pressured to, to be more innovative. And to be more innovative, we have to see what I call uh, these third platform mashups. So how can I leverage cloud? Um, how can I leverage uh, mobility and, and, and providing services to multiple uh, devices, end to end, whether it's a, a desktop device, a tablet device, or a smartphone? And how do I use big data and analytics, um, not just to understand uh, what my customers are doing, but to use that to make money, to use that to generate new revenues as we're seeing a lot of telcos begin uh, to do increasingly. And then increasingly, how do I use social networking? Uh, so these are some of the key, key teams I'll, uh, I'll discuss over the next uh, few minutes or so. So what I thought I'd do is, is basically, uh, next slide, Roberta, speak to specific examples of, of how from different companies around the world and how I see these companies um, uh, implementing their own uh, specific strategies to deal with this transformation uh, that we're seeing across uh, the ecosystem. Um, you know, I take the example, first example is AT&T in the U.S. So AT&T doesn't really have a CIO. Uh, that role has been consolidated with, with that of the CTO, who has a very broad uh, focus um, who's responsible for innovation within the company. AT&T has, um, you know, a few uh, AT&T Foundry Labs where um, there is an internal uh, generation of, of, of IDAs for new services. They work with partners um, in, the, in the vendor community. They work with partners in the, um, you know, the application uh, development space. They work with um, supply chain partners, right, VAR, systems integrators. And, and, and the role of the CIO slash CTO is to basically call um, IDAs from all of these sources um, to, to produce new, new services, to improve time to market, to improve um, and, and sort of focus AT&T's investment in its network platform um, and how the, the overall platform evolves and how the architecture of that platform evolves. So it's, it's about meeting AT&T's, um, you know, business goals. It's about um, uh, uh, innovation, new services, and specific goals around time to market, the customer experience, and, and moving from um, the, the traditional legacy experience to one that's shaped by specific APIs um, for customers and partners, et cetera. Then you look at a company like Vodafone, um, 
which unlike AT&T is, is a much more geographically dispersed uh, company with, with specific companies in, in, in dozens of countries around the world and, and, and small uh, in emerging markets and developed markets, et cetera. Uh, and, in, and, and a much more uh, uh, diverse company with, with primarily mobile holding, but with the acquisition of cable and wireless, also significant um, uh, uh, wireline uh, holdings. And, and, and since uh, 2010, what, what, what um, Vodafone and CIO did was basically really uh, put in place this aggressive plan to hire um, CIOs around the world that have a background, um, specific background as a CIO in the enterprise segment to really help the company transform um, into a modern uh, IT and, and mobile infrastructure, to really consolidate uh, various billing back office and CRM platforms, and then, and then basically to, to implement the next generation cloud delivery platform. And I think that's the common team we hear from all uh, the telecom is how do I implement, how do I move from a legacy uh, infrastructure to a cloud-based um, service delivery and provisioning platform? And I think that's something that we've seen emerge as a key, um, you know, a, a key goal, a key mission statement for, for telco CIOs. So, um, and, and then if you look at a company like, I'll, I'll jump a bit here to Telefonica, very similar um, uh, uh, aggressive goal with the CIO on a global basis, also because they have, um, you know, geographically dispersed operations in many countries. And what we've seen here is this need to balance um, uh, local needs uh, to meet local specific regulatory um, and, and consumption patterns, and, and balance that with this need for, for a global standardized um, service delivery platform that will be most cost effective and most efficient. So on the one hand, um, you know, the CIO, the, the, the local CIOs have this goal for a specific CRM, um, for a specific ERP. Uh, but they also have to meet this, this common service delivery platform that, that Telefonica is implementing around the world. So I think we see this balance, um, whether you're local, global, or whether you're in just one specific market, and it's a key challenge that varies by company. Um, another company is Verizon, which, which to me has a very uh, aggressive um, CIO as well. And I, I chose Verizon because I think um, Verizon came because of acquisitions in the mobile space within the U.S. of acquiring um, dozens of, of properties and at one point had 81 different, um, you know, billing systems that they had to um, consolidate and standardize. They've not pretty much done that um, and, and, and also standardize all of the, the, you know, the back office elements, USSB, SS for those companies. The challenge for Verizon now is, is, is implementing a cloud, you know, service delivery platform, and, and, and they've been pretty aggressive more than anyone else in sort of adopting Terramark's platform as their next-gen service delivery platform, and, and they're even looking forward aggressively as how do, I, how do I retire the legacy platform. So sort of a different focus for the CIO at Verizon. So next slide, uh, Roberta. So, you know, just to recap um, uh, quickly in the time we have today, I think, you know, some of the key roles and, and key issues I've seen here is, is in innovation. As a CIO, how do I improve time to market? How do I improve the customer experience? How do I keep costs down? How do I use IT as a strategic, um, uh, uh, um, you know, force within the company? And I think one of the end game here is is basically to change the way you 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 interact with the customer, right? So what we're seeing is moving from sort of doing individual transactions to to customers more and more. Uh, an example I would give is you know 
we're seeing some companies begin to follow and implement what I call the Apple model, right? Where if you go to a retail store, um, you know, all of the all of the all of the end users' information um, is easily available, right? There's very there's very little paper. Um, the entire uh, customer uh, 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 record is digitized, so it's easily accessible to uh, the customer at the store or if they call in on the customer care help desk. Um, and, and you have the option for uh, online billing um, and, and invoicing. So I think, you know, and that's a key change we're seeing, um, you know, this, this adopting this new culture that was really pushed and, and by Apple, the Apple retail experience. Um, I talked a bit about IT transformation, standardization on a global cost efficiencies, but also localizing to meet specific requirements in specific markets. Um, and then strategic initiatives, embracing new platforms, um, using big data and analytics to, 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 um, to, to, to basically focus on specific demographics to understand the, the experience of specific customers, whether it's mobile or landline, and to use that to sell um, new services, whether it's location-based services, whether it's new data plans. I think we're beginning to see uh, the use of big data and analytics and these new platforms being in implemented. And, and also using social networks. For example, I've seen Telstra uh, implement um, social networking in, in sort of a crowdsourcing manner to, to, to do customer care and customer support. So, so using their own customer base in a social network-like platform to answer questions on specific uh, uh, technologies um, and, 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 and answer specific, um, experiences. So we're beginning to see these new forms um, of platforms emerge. And then finally, implementing a network that really quantifies the customer experience and really allows for rapid response to improving that rapid response to improving um, services and service delivery and overall time to market uh, for new services. So with that, I'll end. And um, I guess I'll pass it uh, over to Kyle uh, for, for the next stage. Well, perfect. Hey, Courtney, definitely appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the great insight there and, uh, and great, uh, great uh, uh, references there to different carriers and how they're handling uh, the CIO position, I think, obviously, with the uh, with the Verizon one, that was a great great point there. With the fact when they when they when they did form uh, more than a decade ago, they had a lot of different operating systems and internal internal organizations to merge together. So that was a very uh, very good uh, very good segue there. So we definitely appreciate that that insight there. Well, uh, now we are to the uh, the, the Q and A section of the webinar. Uh, uh, and for those of you who are listening in, uh, if you do want to send a question into either Roberta. Or to Courtney, please uh, use the, uh, the questions panel there on the GoToWebinar control panel, and we will try to get to as many questions here as possible. Uh, and for any questions that we don't happen to get to, uh, we will be sharing the questions list with our panel members so they can follow up with you perhaps offline if, if possible. So, uh, and with that, so we'll start the questions. I know, uh, Roberta, I think you had a couple of questions to begin with, so maybe we'll start if, uh, if you've got a question ready for, for Courtney. We can start with that one first, Roberta. That's great. Um, so, well, I, I think we, we, we could start about talking about this legacy that was uh, Courtney just told about uh, during the presentation. I think this is the hardest part for CIOs to innovate and embrace new technologies while they also have to deal with these legacy systems? Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, in, in, in many in many um, countries still, um, service providers are required to provide a certain level of service, to provide service to, say, rural communities, um, to provide uh, a specific level of service to, say, the elderly. Um, they have uh, tariff pressures. So I think that in many respects, they have a lot of pressures on them, and, and, and they, they, they don't have the flexibility that, say, over-the-top players, uh, where they can do what they want, target whoever they want. In, in many cases, 
um, you know, service provider, the, the telecom providers are still viewed as sort of a utility and, 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 and have a lot of responsibility. Around. So it kind of slows them down. I think the challenge for them basically is basically how do I use um, IP? How do I use mobility? So uh, can I do, um, you know, can I retire um, landline service and offer, uh, you know, a mobile broadband service in some rural areas? And I think we're beginning to see regulators, you know, allow them to, to, to do more cost-effective, uh, implement more cost-effective means of, of reaching service providers. But in the interim, they're kind of straddling two worlds, and they have to, they have to make, they have to provide a portal that merges the billing system for these two worlds, that provides customer care for these two systems. Uh, and in many cases, it's, it, it's, it's tough. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Brazil, and, and across Latin America, what we see is uh, the huge groups of telecom operators, they are built from many smaller carriers from countries. So uh, in addition to normal legacy systems that a regular, regular company might have, they also have to deal with all these different systems that each carrier have uh, deployed in the past. And how and I see the difficulty to transform all these smaller systems and legacy systems in, into something new and innovative. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 tough. And even even with it, even with mobility, um, you know. We, there's still a challenge. I think that you can still go into, um, you know, some uh, telco mobile stores and they'll tell you, well, you know, I'll turn on your service, but, you know, it might take a day, you know, or, you know, I have to get some, 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 some of your records faxed to me from, you know, another location. So there's still a, a, a significant example of these archaic, um, IT, uh, you know, um, structure still in place, and there's a lot of work still being done to really, you know, as as, as Telefonica and Vodafone would say, digitize, you know, the 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 IT infrastructure, the back office infrastructure, to really provide, you know, better customer information to to agents and customer care professionals. I mean. Where, whereas you can go to some of the newer providers and it's much easier to get, you know, call records, it's much easier to get um, your, your billing information uh, because they don't, you know, they don't have all of this consolidation to do. They don't have a legacy platform to worry about. Yeah, yeah, those are good, those are good points. Obviously, uh, with consolidation happening across uh, telecom and specifically across wireless, at least here in the U.S., uh, yeah, that's, that's a huge part of it is trying to digitize uh, kind of everything and, and get it all on and on the same page for the most part. That's definitely a big challenge for, for CIOs. So should be good. So anyway, so it looks like we have some questions that have come in. Uh, again, I want to remind those who are listening in that if you do have uh, any questions for Roberta or Courtney, to please uh, use the, the questions tab there on the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get to some of those questions here. Uh, we did have a couple of questions. It uh, looks, like, looks like they're kind of on the same topic, but... Um, you know, I guess uh, maybe for Courtney here, I, get, I guess to get your view on perhaps some international uh, differences or similarities uh, when it comes to uh, how carriers are handling uh, kind of integrations issues and, and you know, how, they, how, how the CIOs kind of deal with different issues. Um, are you seeing anything specific to, to specific regions right now where, where perhaps these are greater challenges to CIOs uh, as opposed to perhaps other regions uh, right now? Is this an answer for Courtney or Roberta? Yeah, for Courtney, sorry. Um, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, one of the interesting um, things I've seen is, um, is with regard to big data and, and how um, in, in some countries it's, it's a little bit easier um, to use um, customer data um, and in other countries, it's not so 
it's it's not so easy. For example, I would say, you know, I'm seeing some of the U.S. carriers pull back a bit mm -hmm. um, in 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 how they use uh, big data because of all the the the, the NSA um, you know leaks and and all the stuff that's gone on around it. They're, they're, to me, they're becoming a bit more cautious around privacy issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that that could hold up uh, some some developments in the U.S. And, and 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 I think perhaps the U.K. as well. Even though I think in the U.K. historically over the last decade or so, there hasn't been that much concern um, in terms of privacy. But I think with with the Snowden um, leak, that 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 may influence things. Um, you know, I think Telefonica in Spain has been very aggressive. Um, you know, with with what they're doing with some of the 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 big data analytics uh, and some of the, the the stuff they're trying to to, to sell to say retailers. Yeah. Um, but I would say to me that a big issue would be privacy. Um, they have a lot of data. The data is there. It's just basically they're very concerned about how do you use it and how do you safeguard privacy. To me, that's that's the biggest concern. Yeah, that's a great point. You're right. It definitely seems like uh, carriers, uh, telecom operators, probably have probably the most amount of data on on people than uh, than, than uh, probably most industries out there. So, uh, yeah, to kind of be able to uh, safeguard that, and then obviously with the different regulations across different countries, different segments of the world, uh, that is a, a bit of a challenge there. So. Uh, that sounds good. Well, Roberta, I'm, I'm sure you've got some more questions there as well. I'll let you uh, perhaps ask another question uh, for, for Courtney, too. Great. Um, just to, to, to add something about big data and remember the, the, the telecom analytics future report. And um, I, I believe, in Courtney, just to add if, if you want to, uh, there are huge opportunities for telecom operators in the big data areas. But I also see that telecom operators have always been uh, big data companies. Uh, can we classify or, or are we facing a new phase mm -hmm. in which uh, the most important is how to analyze all this data in, in order to better understand customers, to improve offerings, and also third parties? Um, yeah, I think that um, I think one of the one of the the key challenges to me is 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 how do you make the network more API um, oriented, more API friendly, so that third parties can basically access your network and access your data. And 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 use that to target specific demographics to 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 create new services based on uh, customer requirements or, or customer uh, uses or specific specific tariffs that you have. Um, I think that is that is the key challenge. Um, it is really. To pivot to becoming more of a transaction-oriented infrastructure, and I think that will happen as as more and more companies, you know, uh, become, you know, more IP uh, uh, have that that IP layer, and to do this, I think the other thing too is is innovation. I think Cisco showed that. Um, you know, with 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 the use of video, um, is you you can start internally. So what Cisco did with 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 say telepresence was they used it internally, right? Um, and they they proof they 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 worked on it internally, and then and then then they rolled it out externally. So I think what we're seeing beginning to see is a lot of a lot of telcos do the same thing, reconfigure their internal information systems, their internal IT. Um, you know, proof it internally, and then open it up externally. So I think that that is something that that, that we're beginning to see now. But I think we're just at the beginning phase of, of business analytics um, and and the use of of this. That it, it will take a while for 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 operators to really polish this and 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 to use new.
technologies, um, you know, such as location-based services to really push out this stuff. Interesting. That sounds good, yeah. Well, again, for, for those of you who are listening in, if you do have any questions for either Roberta or for Courtney here, please feel free to uh, use the questions tab there on the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll try to get to uh, as many of those as possible. Uh, it looks like maybe another question here for Courtney, too. Uh, someone asking about, uh, obviously, the topic you just mentioned, the, the big data topic there. Um, someone asking, um, I guess, what are some of the critical areas to consider uh, for a for successful big data strategy? What do you see as perhaps some of those, some of those maybe issues that, that, that need to be tackled before that can really be implemented across a, a telecom operator? Um, well, I think, I think um, w one of the issues I mentioned um, was, you know, a, a, apart from, you know, the privacy issue is what's the business objective, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is, is it basically um, to, to improve the customer experience? Is it basically um, to, say, improve time to market, to figure out um, what your customers are doing and, and what they want? Um, is, it, is it to... Um, is it more focused on customer care? So mm -hmm. knowing, have a sort of a real, almost a real time understanding what customers are doing so that, that, that you can provide better customer care? Is it, um, you know, having a portal that allows um, more self care? So I think each company has to uh, decide on, on a, a specific business objective and I think once they do that, you know, they can shape their internal policies to, but to meet that business objective. There's no standard, I think. Um, it, it, it depends on where you are in the market. What do you want to grow share? What do you want to maintain share? Um, and, and, and what do you want to do to retain or grow your customer base? Got it. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. All right. All right. Um, uh, Roberta, I, I don't know if you have another question or not for, for Courtney or another topic you want to, want to bring up as well. Yeah, I think there is a, a topic here from audience that um, I, I think it could be important to touch with. Uh, uh, he's asking if the training telco space is that CIO's role is becoming increasingly su subordinated to roles of CTOs and CMO. CIO now means career is over. Have you heard this sentiment in your discussions? Um, I have to say no. I spoke with the CIOs from Global, Telefonica, Sprint. Uh, in Brazil, I, I talked with uh, Teen and Telefonica. And uh, I've been covering CIOs for about eight years. And uh, this role about CIOs role is dying, or CIOs is becoming chief of innovation offices, or this role is changing. Of course, I, I think all careers and all professional profiles um, have to change in a bit due to new technologies and new demands from companies. But I heard that indeed what I heard that was very interesting from the Telefonica Global CIO is that he was very excited about new challenges that Telefonica is becoming a digital company so he see a lot lots of opportunities and from my perspective I might say that there are those CIOs that can see that and take advantage of this new uh, concept or this new scenario and there are those that are just focused on more very technical and very uh, software or, or tele uh, technology details that don't think as a role so my not advice but what I can say that from what I've been he hearing is that CIOs have this opportunity to step as a more strategic and to be on the board and to talk with others uh, and colleagues and chiefs in the career space to bring and to to bring up some um, improvements and some new roles from from carriers. Uh, have you heard something about that, Courtney? Um, you know, I I think that to me there's a lot of pressure on on telecom providers today. Um, it's like you cannot. You cannot op keep operating um, with the same old policies. Um, if you want to become, um, as they say, more um, 
you know, oriented towards uh, IT as an ICT, um, you have to change. You know, you have to become more open. You have to, you know, be almost responsive to real-time, you know, social network uh, networking capabilities. So I think that um, that involves, you know, changing your mindset to just be internally focused and to keep to be aware of, of you know, external forces which has been traditionally um, role and, and how that impacts what you do internally. So I, I think that I definitely see, um, you know, the influence of, of, of social, um, you know, having an impact on, on, on speed, on, on innovation. Um, and I think that that is breaking down some of them and will continue to break down um, the barriers. I think that, you know, especially for the companies that are, um, you know, integrated companies, if, if you're, a, say, primarily a mobile company, you know, and you, and you don't have a lot of markets, it's okay. It's, it's not as much as a challenge. But if you're these giant um, geographically dispersed uh, integrated companies, you are facing significant challenges, and I think you have to break down a lot of traditional barriers. And I think, um, you know, we are increasingly hearing, for example, about network as a service. So mm -hmm. to be, to get to offer uh, as a service, network as a service, where you know you're not selling um, a specific circuit or you're not selling, um, you know, X percent of, 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 of bandwidth, you know, you need to get to that point where you can sell the service, whatever that service is, um, and sell it sort of on a per seat basis. And you can't do that if you don't have a, a totally consolidated, um, you know, billing, Customer care platform. If you if if you have a, a view into everything that that end user is doing on a real time basis, and and have the capability to change that on sort of as an on demand basis, I think that's the challenge. And and most of you know most telcos are not there yet. You know there might be twenty percent, thirty percent consolidated. But there's still a long way off from being there. At least the big integrated players. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Well, uh, it looks yeah. like again, if, if if anybody has any more any more questions uh, uh, from from the audience, uh, please feel free to use the uh, the go to webinar control panel there. Uh, Roberta, I don't know if you had another another question for for Courtney as well. Sure. No, just to add it, I I think they they have to be open for these new uh, technologies and trends. So. And uh, talking about that topic, uh, what have you seen about what's going to impact the, the role of CIOs from carriers in the near future? I point out in my presentation the STN, big data, and those uh, more uh, customer experience server uh, systems. What else could you point out as most uh, as trends for? for well, you know, I think that. Um I, I think there's a lot of hype around SDN and NFV, but I think that's going to take years to implement. Um, you know, that works well in the data center, for example, but virtualization um, in the network is going to take a while uh, to be implemented. Uh, telcos are very, very slow, and, you know, they want to make sure that uh, you know, virtualization won't impact the customer experience. You know, and I think we're we're seeing more and more the vendors uh, become you know a little bit more aggressive. But I think virtualization is going to take a few years. Um, I think um, uh, as a service is something that I think will will really over the next few years begin um, to impact service providers. 
And I think a lot of it is because the issue is it's a business model. It's not quite there yet for network providers, but I think they're moving quickly um, to, to, to some as a service, whether it's infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, application as a service. They're moving cautiously in that direction. And to me, the importance is, is, is delivering services, sort of their service delivery platform from a cloud basis. To me, that's, that's the important part of it. And of course, you know, data analytics and then implementing social. I think those are the keys that I looked at. And when you say infrastructure as a service and this whole cloud computing, uh, do you mean by adopting them or also selling that? Because I asked I think you, both. Uh, I think I think adopting both. it as your service delivery platform and also selling it. Um, I think selling it as a given, they have to do that, but they have to be very careful because service providers can't compete with Google and Amazon. Um, they can't. Those guys have, you know. Um, exponentially more um, uh, data center capacity and, and, and server and storage capacity than a lot of telcos, uh, and they compete on price. What telcos need to do is, is, is basically say, okay, I can provide the flexibility, I can provide the options for you in a secure, reliable environment. So I think infrastructure as a service is all about how can telcos basically adopt this uh, adopt this model carefully, and and and, and also meeting their their margin requirements. Um, what what I see them more uh, doing uh, is it's basically using infrastructure as a service delivery platform, using that flexibility and that cost effective ability to reliably push out um, innovative new services. I think that to me is where they'll benefit from. And that's what I see Verizon trying to do with Terramark. That's what I see at and trying to do with its cloud infrastructure. Um, and I think increasingly you're seeing, say, Singtel do some interesting stuff as well, as well as companies like NTT and Telstra. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And I think kind of maybe going back even to what you guys were talking about earlier about uh, challenges for CIOs going forward. I mean, it seems like in the past CIOs have been people, uh, obviously, you know, CEOs, CTOs. Uh, CMOs have been kind of taking a lot of the limelight where the CIOs, the CIOs have been the people behind the scenes making sure everything works and uh, right. it seems like uh, with the changes happening now that, that, that maybe that position might start gaining maybe some more light uh, but again you know it does seem like in general CIOs are perhaps maybe a bit more media shy than, than some of the others so uh, you know you'll, you'll never quite see them uh, gaining a lot of limelight but uh, it definitely seems yep. like their, their positions going forward are as important now uh, as ever before it seems like. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, we're just about out of time on this webinar here. Uh, I don't know, Roberta, if you had any, any final questions or comments you wanted to, uh, to, 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 to provide? Uh, I think it's good. The, the only thing I think we, we should just uh, give some highlights is the trends on um, what's coming next with machine to machine and Internet of Things because I believe it will be a huge impact to telecom operators and uh, impacting the all areas and all IT organizations. Um, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think, I think um, the Internet of Things is, is, is going to have a profound um, impact on service providers um, from, from a couple of different perspectives. One is there's going to be uh, different business models developing and, and I think different partnerships emerging where um, you're going to be working with, with, with a lot, you know, different companies that to, to, to manage connected devices um, and, and also there's going to be a lot more, you know, a phenomenal amount of information flowing over these networks that need to be, um, you know, collected and stored and 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 archived and retrieved at some point. So I think we're going to see this exponential requirement to manage a lot more data, right? So that changes. The other thing that changes is you're going to be dealing with, uh, as for example, if we look at this, this wearables, right? this new trend around uh, 
you know, you may have a device in your shirt, you may be wearing a connected device um, on in your watch, your, your glasses. So there's there's going to be different players um, and different partners for the service providers. So they're going to have to develop APIs that allow different players from different industries connect to their network. And I think that's going to be a big change that we're going to see as well is you're going to have to have very sophisticated APIs across a wide range of verticals to deal with uh, different connected devices. So lots of information to manage and, and, and analyze and store and a lot of different players, new players as partners. Yeah, yeah, that was a great point. You're absolutely right. It does seem like, uh, you know, obviously uh, with this move towards wearable devices and, and uh, embedding a wireless mo module in just about everything that everything that, uh, that can be powered by something, uh, it seems like that's going to definitely challenge uh, telecom yeah. operators going, going forward. So, well, that's great. Well, again, we're just about out of time here. Um, I definitely want to thank uh, everyone for sending in the questions for our panel members here. Uh, sorry we didn't get to all of them, but uh, the list of unanswered questions with our panel members who, if time allows, can follow up uh, individually on that. Uh, also, want to let you, everyone know that this webinar uh, will be archived on the rcrwireless.com site uh, in a few days. Uh, and for those that might have missed uh, missed some of it, uh, they can check it out there. Uh, and also, please check out our the feature report that Roberta just released on this topic. It should be available on the site now. Uh, and for those who registered for this webinar, uh, you should be getting an email with links to both the webinar uh, archive as well as the report too. So look for that in your email box. Uh, well, again, thanks, uh, everyone, for participating today, and a special thanks to Roberta and Cordy for providing, for, for providing the insights. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, for the time today. We appreciate it.